I want you all to reflect for a second. When you were a kid, did you have big ideas? Maybe you wanted to fly like Superman, walk on water, or maybe jump to the moon. Now, maybe some of you went to your basement and tried to build rocket-powered shoes or floating shoes. But as we grew older, we were told by our parents, our teachers, and the whole world to get real. In the past few years, there's been a lack of truly breakthrough innovations. There are institutional pressures that reward conservative science and incremental growth. So instead of worrying about the next big thing, people are concerned about publishing journal articles and just getting a lot of citations. But to the kids like me who really don't have much to lose, or adults who want to pave their own path, why not go for it? How can we make dreams real? And how can we innovate? My name is Nishant Lahiri. I am a senior in high school and student researcher at Cornell University. And I have tried and failed many times to work on big ideas of my own. Today, I'm going to talk about the different phases of innovation and my experiences with each of them. Know your why and what will follow. Why defines our vision, and what lays down the things that we do to achieve that vision. Whether we want to work on an idea by ourselves or with a team, it is critical that the why be clear. Without that, dwelling on the facts and features and plunging into solutions does not create the passion that is required to birth an idea. Knowing the why serves as a guiding principle the inevitable twists and turns of innovation. This step came the easiest to me. Every night I would watch the news with my parents and hear debates about cl climate change that would always end in a stalemate. Seeing the divisiveness of the issue, I realized that until we can make climate change something that unites us, it will always be an uphill battle. 94% of Americans recycle. That's way more than bipartisan adoption. So after, after reading an article about carbon capture, I asked, can we just recycle carbon dioxide? From there, my what came pretty quickly. I envisioned a box inside of your house that would capture carbon dioxide over the course of a week. After that week was up, it would be picked up at your curb along with traditional recycling and garbage and then taken to a county facility. There, it would be heated to release the CO2 so that the unit could be returned back to the house for further capture. The CO2 could either be sold, repurposed, or permanently stored underground. I called my process ICART, or Integrative Carbon Reduction Technology. And that takes me to the second part. Take that first step. Thinking big will drive us crazy if we use it to plan every step of the way. We need a vision to begin, yes, but we don't need a complete plan to begin. What we need is to get started. It is crucial to turn our thinking into action, to not waste time in creating that perfect plan, and to feel the energy that comes from seeing things in action. Paul Graham, a computer science entrepreneur, once said that the way to do really big things seems to be to start with deceptively small things. And so that's what I did. I started in my kitchen to test my idea. I boiled red cabbage to make pH indicators. I poked plastic straws through water bottles. And I used Diet Coke as a source of carbon dioxide. I made Lego animations to demonstrate my idea, and with all that, I submitted a two-minute video to the 3 M Young Scientist Challenge. A few months later, I was called out of math class by my principal through the intercom. I had no idea what I had done wrong, but I was just thinking, oh crap, what did I do? I walk into her office in complete silence, and then she hands me the phone. I hear that I was selected as a finalist in the competition, and I go on to keep presenting my idea at the 3M headquarters in Minnesota. So much for a science experiment. <laughs> so that takes me to the next phase, finding access. 
How many of you have seen the movie King Richard, where Richard Williams tries to make tennis stars out of his daughters Serena and Venus? All Richard tried to do was get access to good tennis courts and coaches to see if his crazy vision had potential. No matter how independent we are or special the idea, we will always need help for that next step, whether it's a piece of equipment, a partner, or a facility. And when we get turned down, we need to be persistent until we get that access. I struggled with this one the most. I knew that I needed a lab to test my idea, take measurements, and test the various chemistries that would make it most efficient. But as a high schooler, there weren't really many open doors. I faced many rejections and unanswered emails as I requested professors, laboratories, and institutions to test my idea. Finally, after a few months, I got an opportunity to work at Cornell University, an hour and a half away from home at a time when I didn't have my driver's license. It's a little inconvenient. So that takes me to my fourth point. Embrace discomfort and practice experimentation. Life may suck initially, as results may be disappointing. <laughs> but if we don't try to experiment and embrace discomfort and take the attitude of a learner, we may never identify the one bet that will drive our idea to success. Thinking big without experimenting will keep ideas at a dream level. While I was in the lab, I tested many materials for my carbon capture units. And after a few months, I finally had a number. But that number wasn't good enough. At that final presentation for the competition, I was a finalist, and that number merely proved I just did unsuccessful research. Mm -hmm. I felt guilty. I was disappointed. But overall, I didn't regret the experience. Great ideas don't guarantee success, and nor does hard work and perseverance. What matters more is an openness to change course if required. I had to take a step back and reinterpret. I was using a chemical that was well known to be efficient at capturing carbon dioxide. So why isn't it working that well? I read published literature, I critiqued my approach, and I developed new procedures, and that more than a year later, I finally had a new number the highest reported carbon dioxide capture capacity in all current literature. Each one of my capture units would capture the equivalent of planting 125 trees every single year. I presented my data and analysis at the Regeneron International Science and Engineering Fair, and I won first place in the category of chemistry. And to bring my idea into the real world, I pro pool pooled all of my pool boy savings into filing a patent. And today, I'm still working to turn that idea into a reality. So that brings me back to my last point. Others can pull you down, but don't let them. It's really, really easy to get caught up in the negativity from the people around us. Your idea isn't that good. It won't work. It's not that great. Go play with Legos, you're a kid. I am not suggesting that you hide from the reality of your situation or completely ignore advice, even when there's some truth to it. But chew over it. Put things into perspective and ultimately decide for yourself. Thinking big involves prioritizing what matters by removing obstacles along the way. Being in the driver's seat as you learn to drive may be exciting but traffic on the road will slow you down, some rash drivers may scare you away, and you may need to change your original route if you wish to reach your destination. There will be many reasons to give up driving, but there are always more to keep going. Thank you. Mm -hmm.